There are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial space flight in the way that you're developing it. And I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that uh, because those guys are, yeah. You know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting stones in your direction. It's difficult. Did you expect them to cheer you on? So they're hoping they would. What are you trying to prove to them? What I'm trying to do is, is to make a, a significant difference in in spaceflight and, and, and help make spaceflight accessible to, to almost anyone. And I, I, I would uh, hope for as much support in that direction as we, as we can receive. There are people who've been in the rocketry business for decades yeah. who say about you that you don't know what you don't know. Well, I, I suppose that's true of anyone. How can anyone know what they don't know? <laughs> but when um, critics say you can't do this, your answer to them is, we've done it. But what I first try to do is I try to get a job at Netscape. So I wouldn't actually try to start a company. I try to get a job at Netscape. Um, and then uh, that didn't work out. No, I, didn't get any, I didn't get any reply. Um, so I, 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 um, I mean, I had a physics and economics degree or physics and business degree um, from, um, from Wharton. Um, and I was doing grad studies and applied physics and material science, and I, I guess that, you know, I didn't have a computer science degree or, or several years working at a software company. Um, well, so what, what, for whatever reason, I didn't get a, a reply you know, from this game, and I actually tried hanging out in the lobby, uh, but I was, I was too shy to talk to anyone, so I was just like standing in the lobby trying to see if there's someone I could talk to, and then I just couldn't, I couldn't, uh, it was, I was too scared to talk to anyone, so then I So, after my third trip, I said, okay, well, what we really need to do here is try to solve the, the space transport problem, and uh, and started SpaceX, um, and uh, this, this was against the advice of pretty much everyone I talked to. But one friend made me sit down and watch a bunch of videos of rockets blowing up. Let me tell you, he wasn't far wrong. It was tough going there in the beginning um, because I'd never built anything physical. I mean, I'd built like little model rockets as a kid and that kind of thing, but um, I'd never had a company that built something physical. So I had to figure out how to, how to do all these things and, and bring together the right team of people. We did all that and, and then failed three times. Um, it, 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 it was tough, tough going. Because the thing about a rocket is that the, the, the passing grade is 100%. You don't get to actually test the rocket in the real environment that it's going to be in. So I think, so the best analogy for, for rocket engineering is, is like if you want to create a really com complicated bit of software, um, you, you can't run the software as an integrated whole, and you can't run it on the computer it's intended to run on. But the first time you put it all together and run it on that computer, it must run with no bugs. The first launch, I was picking up bits of rocket near the the launch site was a bit sad. I think basically both SpaceX and Tesla from the beginning um, are probably less than 10% of the likely, likely to succeed. Yeah, 2008, we had the third and second failure of the Dock 1 rocket for SpaceX. Tesla almost went bankrupt. We, we closed our finance around 6 p.m. Christmas Eve 2008. It was the last hour of the last day of the we would have gone back up two days after first night. And I put four stoves on the Tesla's a sell, sell, sell. You don't want to own this stuff. You don't want to lease it. Heck, you, don't even, you shouldn't even rent the darn thing. We just want you to take it for a test drive on that IPO and then bring it right back to the lot. Why? Because beyond the hype, there's just not much going on here. Tesla still has yet to turn a profit. That'd be a $1.5 billion company with no profit. Its most recent quarter actually lost more money than it did the year before. $1.5 billion, losing more money than the year before. This is a company with limited visibility. If, if things had just gone a little bit the other way, both companies would be dead. And, I, and I, like one of the most difficult choices I've ever faced uh, in life was, was in 2008. Um, I think I had uh, maybe thirty one dollars left or thirty or forty one dollars left in two thousand eight. I had two choices. 
I could put it all into one company, and then the other company would definitely die, or split it between the two companies. I would put it between the two companies, they're both my company. You know, when you put your blood, sweat, and tears into creating something, you're building something, it's like a child. And so, it's like, which one am I going to let one start to die? I can bring myself to do it, so I put, I, I split the money between the two. Fortunately, I think this uh, is looking for. The idea of being long fan of species and getting out there and exploring the stars is one of those really inspiring, exciting things. I mean, just as Apollo was incredibly inspiring um, to everyone around the world. And even though, was, I mean, only a very tiny number of people went there, but I mean, vicariously, we all went there. And, and I think that's true of, of if, if we have a Mars base as well. Um, and it's very important that we have things that are exciting and inspiring in the future. Because otherwise, why get up in the morning? You know, it's just about one sort of sad problem after another. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like life, life's not worth living. When I was a kid, I was wondering, kind of, what's the meaning of life? Like, why are we here? What's it all about? And um, I came to the conclusion that uh, what, what really matters is trying to understand the right questions to ask. And the more that we can increase the scope and scale of uh, human consciousness, the better we are able to ask these questions. If you consider two futures, one where uh, we are forever confined to Earth until eventually something terrible happens, or another future where we are out there on many planets, maybe even going beyond the solar system, um, I think that second version is incredibly exciting and inspiring, and there need to be reasons to get up in the morning. You know, life can't just be about solving problems. Otherwise, what's the point? There's got to be things that people find inspiring uh, and make life worth living. When you had that third failure in a row, did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Eight weeks later, Musk bet the company on another flight. We have liftoff. This time around, everything worked. Perfect. If that fourth launch hadn't worked, that would have been it. Um, we would have not had the resources to mount a fifth. You couldn't have gone out at that point. We, we, it, yes, death would have been, I think, inevitable because we did not have the resources to, to mount a fifth launch. I'm probably not the guy that most people would bet on. Um, <laughs> you can win. It's, it's, it's like a, a little kid fighting a bunch of sumo wrestlers. <laughs> Usually the sumo wrestlers win. We're, you know, we're a little scrappy company. Every now and again, a little scrappy company wins. And I, I, I think this will be one of those times. You know, there are American...